Hey guys, welcome back to the Hippier Podcast, also known as Uncomfortable Truths. If you're new here, this is a podcast where I just talk. I don't know why that many people subscribed, but apparently, like, I'm therapeutic in some sense. Apparently, and I'm not mad. Um, so today, we're going to be talking about a topic that um, I wanted to get to, but I felt like I wasn't prepared for, or I just felt like... Like, I wasn't up to it. I wasn't up to the task because it's such a grand task. And the title is very, very charged. A lot is the answer. That's a very charged title. Like, a lot is all you need. That's basically what it's saying. A lot is the answer for anything and everything. Uh, that doesn't mean that you can go on tests and just write, a lot is the answer, and then expect to get an A+. Plus. I did that last time. It didn't work. But it's such a heavy topic. Because we seldom, the thing I meant, it's a heavy topic because it's often forgotten. Like we get so into this dunya, or we get so entranced by it, and like, like we're so invested in it that we forget that Allah is always the answer. You know, and it's something I realized actually two two days ago or yesterday. I don't remember because I low-key have Alzheimer's in my 20s. But yeah, I realized that I was sleeping. I was about to sleep. I was about to sleep. And then there was something bothering me. There's like this situation in my life that's bothering me right now. And well, not anymore, right? Because I, when I was thinking about it, I was really just so fed up. I was so fed up. I was like, like this person is bothering me. You know what I mean? But then... I like started analyzing it. I started inspecting it bit by bit, like breaking down this problem into its constituent parts. And I started to analyze and try to find the root cause of this problem. And well, lo and behold, the root cause was me. I was the problem all along. I'm not surprised. I'm always the problem, actually, in most of my problems. Uh, so it's just a matter of realizing it, you know? I realized that was a problem, not because like my existence is a problem, although to some it is. Uh, it's mostly that my mindset was so wrong. Like the way I was thinking about it was so off the mark. It was so bad. It, it wasn't bad, bad, like immoral. It was just not a good mindset. It wasn't. It was a chasing mindset. It was a poor mindset, a mindset of like, like, I am, I'm, I don't know how to explain this. I'm deprived. You know, I want something. There's something out there that I really want that I don't have that I want to have right now. It was basically me throwing a tantrum uh, because I had a poor mindset. Because it's like, I want this thing. Let me have this thing. Like, what the hell? Why don't I have this thing? You know, just an example. But, oh, my bad. But, when I inspected it further and further and further, I was like, okay, what's the solution? Like, what's the solution to this really petty problem? Respectfully, it's petty to want things and to and you know you can't have them and to still nag and nag saying you want them to nobody but yourself. Like, you're just there awake at night at 12 a.m. and you can't sleep because you want something and you can't have it. That is genuinely petty in my eyes so i was like okay what's the solution to this entire thing this this entire tantrum and that's when i realized i was like oh my god this is a test oh oh my god you know when you have like those realizations at 12 a.m that you just don't expect to have like you think it's just another day another night you know, you're just gonna sleep and find a bright new day the next day no that wasn't the case the, the case was not that way it was like I was about to sleep and then I realized that and then when I realized that my problem was so petty and that the solution had no other answer but that it's just to turn to Allah it's when I realized it's when I realized it's there's nothing in this dunya that can go above Allah that could be greater than Allah. That could be bigger or more impactful than Allah. Because what do we always say? Allahu Akbar. 
Allah is greater. It doesn't translate to Allah is great. It translates to Allah is greater. And it doesn't even say Allah is greatest, even though that is a fact. But it says Allah is greater. And I know I repeat that a lot in my podcast. But that's because when you start to understand Allahu Akbar is literally talking about your entire life in one phrase. Like you have something else to do later. That's great. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Allah is greater, respectfully. <laughs> well, not Allahu Akbar in that way. Like Allahu Akbar, boom. That's such that's such a bad stereotype. I don't know how that came to be. Oh, no. I remember now. I remember very well, actually. September. Um, the calendar is not helping. But yeah, this phrase, I don't think, is pondered enough. Allahu Akbar. Allah is greater. Whatever I was thinking about at that time, at the night, at 12 a.m., Allah is greater. What was I like obsessing over? What was I stressing about? That's why I thought of it as petty because I was like, damn, like what am I chasing? If Allah is greater than all of this, I should I should chase Allah, right? So then why am I not chasing Allah? And there was this other instance that happened just a couple days ago. Um, I was scrolling on YouTube Shorts, and I really wanted to listen to the specific song because it came up. And I honestly try not to scroll at all because there's music involved anyway. And with music, I just try to avoid it at all costs, like actively not listening, but also trying to avoid. You can't avoid it at all times because sometimes it's just playing in supermarkets or whatever. But I try to avoid it at all costs, and I come across them in shorts and reels and TikToks. So I just try to avoid that as well, because, I mean, not much benefit. I mean, that much benefit comes out of these platforms. Let's be real. Like, yes, you can gain some advantage, but it's not going to be almost, like, life-changing. It's only 0.1%. It's going to be life-changing. Anyway, I was listening to this song, and I was like, I really want to listen to this song. I do. I have not clicked a song like like i actively went and clicked on a song to listen to it i haven't done that in like four months and i've been working on that forever by the way it's still really hard it's still really difficult people think like oh it gets easier sure maybe but i've been on this journey for a good amount of time and it it's still hard it's still painful like i don't no, if people know that it can still be hard and that's fine you know it didn't magically get easier anyway i really wanted to listen to the song and then my mindset came up this mindset that i pondered that night at 12 a.m and i was like allah is the answer like allah is literally the answer like if i'm having this desire if i want if i want to do something that i know i don't want to do because i've I've been working on it. I've been working on my character. I've been working on my habits and what I put into my system through my senses and my brain. I've been working on it, you know, and I said, if I want to keep that, then Allah is the answer. So I went to YouTube and I did what I thought was best. So I pulled up this surah, surat Yasin, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it was Surat Yasin. I pulled up this beautiful recitation. I'm going to put it in the description below. Um, and it, when I listened to it, and I listened to it attentively, you know, I listened to it with an open heart. I listened to it and gave it my all. Like, we don't give the Quran full attention. I gave it my full, complete, entire, 100% attention. And the way the words melted and poured into my heart, and I was like, oh my god, Allah is like the answer. You know, that's crazy. No, but like really, I was like listening and I was like, why didn't I do this before? Like you think you're so dumb when you realize how much you've been missing out on. And it it makes you upset. It makes you angry because... You feel like you were distracted this entire time. And distraction is actually something that I want to get into later in the episode. Because I have a list of bullet points that I wrote out. Because I wanted this to be organized. But I don't think I'm going to be successful at that. But that's fine. And when I listened to it. I 
I always, when I listen to Quran, because I had a craving for music, while I'm listening to the Quran, I ask myself the question, okay, now do you want the music? You know, just to assess myself. And sometimes, yeah, sometimes, yeah. I'll, it's, it's, it's a bad, bad, you know, thing to admit to, but sure, yeah, sometimes. Some days, I don't feel it. That's fine. But at that time, when I was listening, and I was... It's, it's about giving it your 100% attention. And when I did that, and I, I like really felt it, and I felt the recitation at the same time, like, I didn't even... I felt like I was chasing a source of light when the entire time I had access to the sun. You know? That's when I listened to the Quran. I felt like I was being fueled by the sun when I wanted to be fueled by like a 20 watt light bulb or something (laughs) like there's a difference there's a massive difference it's not the same thing you know and so when we belittle the Quran to simply just listening to it when it's something that you swim into it's like a sea. It's like a sea of worlds. I don't want to use the phrase, but it's like under the sea from Ariel. You know? Under the sea. I can't be serious for too long. It's it's just my personality. But yeah, so I was listening and I was so upset. I was like, I had access to the sun this entire time. And I just, I didn't use it. <laughs> like you think you're really dumb when you do that by the way and not gonna lie 10 out of 10 times you are probably because you have the source of the sun and you've been chasing light bulbs this entire time how do you think when you see that in retrospect how do you think you're gonna feel you know what i mean it's like chasing one dollar bills across the street when if you just look to the left There's all of the money in the world. You know, and I don't want to like use the example of money, but I just want to show how valuable the Quran is and how healing it is. Like, like you just have to give it some attention, all of it, if not some, you know, just give it some attention, give it attention like you give tiktoks your attention give it attention like you give your friends the attention because at the end of the day allahu akbar allahu akbar allah is greater than all of those things combined allah is greater than everything combined because he created those things so when i realized that i just felt so stupid like a lot is greater bro i know i keep repeating that i'm sorry but when you realize it it's not funny first of all it's not funny second of all your priorities take a 180 degree turn they do because you see your life as this one big chunk of thing that you just have to go through and i mean do well in right that's a different topic do well in and try But like really, 90% of the things that happen here don't really matter. And realizing that, it can be painful sometimes because you've invested a lot of your energy in those things. In, well, some tedious things. Things that that are not going to do anything for you. Simply because you thought it was fun. Or you thought, maybe this will make me happy. Or maybe like this is the right thing to do or maybe this will bring me peace but you know that it won't unless it's the Quran you know what I mean or the words of Allah or anything connected to Allah I swear when we try to find peace and happiness in anything else besides Allah and everything connected to Allah it's like we're chasing you know this um, I don't know what it is in English but in Arabic it's called sarab when when it's so hot out, when it's so, so hot out on the roads, that it's, it feels like there's water, 
from afar, from a distance, but there's no water. It has to do with like the heat and I don't know, I'm not gonna act like all sciencey and stuff, but it's like the imagination of water. You know, the non-existence of water, but the imagination of water from a distance. And that's how it feels when you're chasing things besides Allah to derive peace and happiness because because it, at the end of the day, it's not actually there. It's all fake. It's all imagination, you know? And this is, this is purely for Muslims, I'll be honest. I feel like um, for non-Muslims who hear that, they, they're very cynical about it, and I get it. I do. Because, you know, when you read the Quran very literally and you don't listen to the recitation or you don't read it with an open heart or you just read it with a cynical mindset, a.k.a. with a closed heart, you're going to feel weird about it. Because, yes, okay, literally, l- word for word, literal meaning, you can't derive that much from it. But when you know the life of the Prophet wasallam, you know the tafasir, or at least some of the ayat, the explanations of the ayat, of the verses, and you know the names of Allah, al-Asma al-Husna, and you just, you listen to it in a beautiful recitation, or not even, but that you ponder the words and you give it its due attention, it's not normal. It's not normal. Like, people think it's like, it's just an everyday thing of let's just read another book. You're reading pure light. You're reading pure light sent from the heavens. You know, and there's something about it that's so healing that I can't explain. You know, like, there's, like, it's a remedy to any kind of pain that I'm feeling. Because sometimes I feel weird. There's not a pain that I can specifically name, right? I just feel weird. I have this negative energy. But when I listen to the Quran, I listen to these beautiful recitations you can find on YouTube. Literally, of anything, there's always something that speaks to my heart. And it speaks it in a way that nothing else can. And it'll be in the most unexpected way ever. And I'm just blown away every single time. Like, I'm really being heard. I'm really being heard in the skies right now. You know, because no way these are just coincidentally relating to all of the things that I've been through. You know, but it there's something for everyone in the Quran. And if you've been through enough, everything is for what you've been through. Everything. The Quran is is something else. Um, but enough about the Quran. <laughs> Not enough about the Quran, but there are some other things that I want to mention. I saw this TikTok recently. I think it was a reel or something like that. I think I saw it on Instagram. And it was this guy, if I can remember it, I don't think I liked it or saved it because I am legitimately mentally ill. If I can try and find it, I will put it here. But it was talking about how Islam is like the cheat code to life. Is he wrong? No. Islam is literally the cheat code to life. And he was talking about how meditation is important. Boom. Five times of prayer a day. You know, five times to pray and meditate in a day. Because it is meditation. You're, you're focusing your mind on one single entity and that is Allah. Meditation is bringing your focus and attention to one center place. You know, and not let it get to wherever it wants to go freely. That's literally Islam. And then he talks about how there is haram food. So like you have to eat well to be well. And I don't know, he just talks about all of these different things. And it was so clear to me. It was so crystal clear to me that Allah made Islam for the everyday person that just wants inner peace. They don't want anything else. They don't want the cars. They don't want... You know, the, 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 I was going to say the girls, <laughs> the people, <laughs> they don't want to follow just their desires. They don't want a big mansion. They don't want all of these material things. They just want peace because they know the other stuff won't bring them peace. And you can see peace so intricately threaded and weaved within the folds of Islam 
for example, and this is just one example, Muslims, when they see each other, they say, Assalamu alaikum. That's how they greet each other. Their greeting is, Peace be upon you. Every Muslim wants peace for themselves and others. Like, that's an intrinsic characteristic within a Muslim. That's their natural tending, is that they just want peace and they want it for everybody else around them. And when you understand how important peace is in your life, you don't want to do with anything else. Like, all the, all these desires, all of these temptations, all of these things on the side, all of these what-ifs, all of these, it's just a little X or whatever. It really doesn't matter because you know it's playing with your peace and that's not worth it. And Allah just perfected Islam to a T just for the everyday person. For them to get the peace that they actually want. For the peace that they, all their lives are dying for. If people cry for peace. People, peop, some people die for peace. People do crazy things to try and attain peace. And Allah just gives it to us. Allah just says, follow me and I'll give you peace. I'll instill in your hearts peace. I'll instill in your hearts the sense of ease and peace so that you don't have to worry. Allah literally said, يُرِيدُ اللَّهَ بِكُمْ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمْ الْعُسْرَ Allah wants for you ease. He doesn't want for you hardship. The goal isn't, let's make their lives as hard as possible. Let's just try this out. Let's just, let's, let's give them a problem. That's not, that's not what it is. That's just life. But Allah wants for us peace. But some people don't even want it for themselves. They're fine with this chaos that they're living in. They're fine going to sleep every night feeling a little empty. It's fine with them. They don't really care for it. They don't care for themselves enough to think about that, to think about fixing that and taking the right steps to curing that hole in their heart. Because believe it or not, I used to have that. I used to go to sleep every night thinking, what am I here for? This is actual torture. I don't, what am I here for? And I would feel so absolutely empty. I feel so used, used by this world. Like, there's nothing that I can do that's enough or amazing that'll make me be different or just above. So I felt so used all the time and I just felt so empty and Honestly, I felt pathetic. I felt so pathetic going to sleep every night. But now, when I sleep and I know who my creator is, I know the things that I have to do in my life to be as close as I can. I know the steps that need to be taken. Being, be it hard, be it easy, I don't care. I know what the steps are. I know what the steps are because I know that Allah wants peace for me. He doesn't want hardship. Because if he wanted hardship, but well, I wouldn't be here, would I? I wouldn't. And that's such a blessing. Allah wants more for us than we want for ourselves. I um, listened to this podcast a while ago. And this podcaster, it was in Arabic. And she said, Allah is more merciful on you than you on your own selves. Like, let that sink in. You think you know. You think you know this is going to make me happy. Or this is just going to give me momentary happiness, but it's worth it. Why do you do yourself like that? When Allah is like out there waiting, ready to give you like everything that you want. But no, you don't want that. You just want the quick fix right now. You just want something to make life a little better in the moment. Like, let that sink in. It's so hard to let that sink in because it's such, it's such a big, heavy truth. It's a heavy truth, but it's, it's an important one because we get so distracted. 
we think that what we have we're we're very empirical in a sense and we think that what, what we can see and what we can touch like all of these things that can be sensed with the five senses are what are deemed as important is like this is all we have you know this is it there's nothing more there's nothing less this is it this is all that we're getting and so we get so tempted we get so invested and we're like okay let's just go all in and let's just binge on all of this all of this stuff that this world has to offer you know and you go you go a little too hard you go a little too much too deep in and you indulge just a little too much and then you wonder why you go to sleep thinking that you want more or what you have is not enough because we weren't designed for that we weren't designed to have this many things or to want this many things and to be exposed to this many things we weren't and so we're always being distracted this that's literally shaitan's game we're always being distracted whether it's a person something they have something they're doing a job that they're in who they're with whatever it is we're always distracted and now more than ever tv shows and movies just show us like a portrayal of a certain lifestyle that we think we aspire to have but we don't because at the end of the day it's all fiction it's all made perfect for tv but that's not life that's a distraction and there's so many distractions in your life it only takes five minutes to realize to realize what is a distraction and what is actually worth your attention because some things can seem like they're worth your attention but they're not they're not they're just pure distraction and you think that you're making progress or you're doing something right with the thing that you're pursuing but it's just a mere distraction and we're indulging in it like like there's no tomorrow like if i indulge in this distraction it's probably gonna make my life better but it isn't it's a harsh truth but it's well true and i know a lot of girls get hung up on certain things that are attractive to girls like well guys <laughs> the opposite gender that's just like the ever-growing epidemic at this point epidemic of like dignity not the person their dignity um and it feels like you're so attached to them that like they're your only source of oxygen in a world that lacks all oxygen that's what that's what a distraction is that's how it makes you feel like they're like your last hope like that's it that's all you've got you know it's the only thing that's keeping you alive or the only thing that's keeping you living or keeping you excited heck is the only thing that's keeping you in existence some people have that yeah and so to live a life like that is just asking to go to bed every night feeling empty because because well life is not the life that you want to live well that's not the life that anyone wants to live but apparently most people are living in it and they they argue that they're fine they're not fine though they're not they could be doing much better they're not fine there's human beings have a purpose that is undeniably powerful but so many people just choose to ignore that so many people choose to ignore it and instead just chase their desires and like their carnal desires and what they feel is right for the moment and not for the future you know but muslims do the exact opposite where they think about the future and ignore right now ignore the moment not ignore it entirely like i'll just be waiting in the present till for the future but it's to not give in to every little temptation in the now to sacrifice the then the then <laughs> to sacrifice the future because the muslims know their real purpose they know why they are here they know this isn't just like a little game that we're playing of like who's gonna give in first no they know there's literally an ayah in the quran that talks of a human being's purpose we're always talking about purpose for example if we're talking about slippers Slippers have a very intended purpose 
to go on people's feet. Their intramolecular forces and composition makes it so that they go on people's feet. That's their purpose. That's the only reason they're here. And, well, besides the purpose of Arab mothers using it as their weapon. But that's a different topic. Case in point. That's it. So what about human beings? What's our purpose? Like, we're not supposed to just go on people's feet. We're not slippers. Slippers can't magically wake up one day and say, I want to be a closet today. That's not, that's not its purpose. It can't do, it cannot physically do that. So same with us human beings. And yes, I'm comparing us to slippers because it's the easiest way to transfer this idea over. It's that we also have a purpose, a very, very specific purpose. And it never changes. It never, ever, ever changes. From birth till death, it never changes. Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبَدُونَ Allah did not create the jinn and the humans but just to believe, just to worship. Because what are we? We're properties of Allah. Just to be in service to Allah. And when we talk about per- worship, it's a very broad thing. Like people don't understand what worship is until they realize it's a thing that you do the entire day. It's not just something that is like an act or, you know, performing the daily five prayers or fasting. That's not what worship is. Worship is everything that you do in a day. It's every given thing you do in a day. It's what you eat for breakfast. It's how you talk to people. It's how you treat your parents. It's the clothes that you wear. That's how you worship Allah. Everything that you do in the day can be a form of worship to Allah. And we don't talk about that enough. We just think like... I'll just get my five daily prayers in and that's it. I'm worshiping Allah. That's not it though. That's not it. All of this goes back to a concept that is called ikhlas, which talks about, well, when you translate it literally, it it's like purity or refining, refining a specific thing, you know? But it has to do with so much more. Ikhlas is like perfecting something to a T for the sake of Allah. Doing something your the best that you can for the sake of Allah. Like when you're doing a paper, you're going to make it one of the best papers that you can write. Don't be a perfectionist to the point where you don't start the paper. But you write a good paper. But you don't write it for the reader. You write it to please Allah. That's a form of worship. Like everything and anything can be a form of worship. And it's, it's maddening that we don't understand this. That... M- Today, Muslims don't understand this. It's something that I still can't wrap my head around. You know, anything and everything that you do in a day can be a form of worship to Allah. With that in mind, I wanted to wrap this up by saying that whenever you face a trial or a challenge, a challenging phase in your life where it's testing your patience and your integrity and your values, The answer will always be to go back to Allah. The one who made you. The one who sustained you. The one who made sure that you were alive from birth to right now. The one who made this entire earth and made sure to put you in it. Allah specifically put you in it. And for a very good reason. And Allah carries that reason. And bestows that reason to us. Is is that our purpose is to worship Him. You know, and to be the best. And He put you specifically on this earth. To do that. And what an honorable. Honorable job that is. He put you and me. To worship him. And I'm so glad that we're here. And then we get to do that. And that's it. That's a wrap. Alright. 
I hope you guys have a great day. I know I did. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.